Hey guys, this is my 1982 GMC one ton crew cab. You may have seen it in the last video where I installed the four inch lift from ORD on the rear of the vehicle. Um, that four inch lift actually gave me six inches of lift for a few different reasons. But um, in this episode, I'm going to show you how to install the four inch front and then we'll measure and see how much it actually gives. This is how the front springs come. They drop ship them from Tough Country directly uh, through FedEx ground. Um, pretty heavy box. Here are the springs themselves. Uh, again, these are four inch springs. Um, we'll see how many inches it actually gives me on the truck. But anyway, these are the HD, the Easy Ride HDs. So they should uh, support heavier engines a little bit better. So here are the front springs again. Uh, I did buy the heavy duty shackle kit. Here are the plates and the uh, greaseable bushings and bolts. And I also ordered the greaseable bushing and bolts for the front of the front springs. So you have to take the bushings out that come with the Tough Country Springs and replace them with these greaseable bushings. These are not greaseable, so you can't, can't use the bolts. It would not be greaseable that way. Uh, what I wanted to point out real quick is that there are differences in all three of these bushings. See, this has a thin shoulder, this is thick. These are obviously a larger diameter. Just make sure that you get the correct bushings in the correct spots. All right, here we are on the front axle. Before we get started, I just want to mention real quick, make sure and wear your protective gear, definitely glasses and gloves. Be safe about it. Um, what you need to do is raise the vehicle and put the frame on jack stands or something very substantial. And then you also need to support underneath the front axle here. Um, once we release the springs, you want to make sure the axle is controlled and doesn't fall. You need to disconnect the sway bar here. And that is a relatively big uh, head on that bolt. It's an inch and an eighth, just so you know. This is a ORD extended brake line that I've already put on here. I've got another video on that. So the brake lines on the front are ready to go. Um, you can see I've got the, the lower shock mount disconnected. Um, and then I just have to do the upper mount. There's a nut on the inside. I would recommend that you loosen your U-bolt nuts before you undo the spring. Now those are pretty tight and it will help you to have the spring attached to the vehicle. This is the driver's side of the truck. You can see I've got the shock off and the U-bolt plate is off here. Um, if you end up cutting the U-bolts, there's a lot of tension on them. So just you know, be careful and they'll, they'll pop on you. It's a little, little surprising. What we need to do next is separate the drag link from the pitman arm and that is so we can install this new aftermarket drop pitman arm and that keeps the steering correct even with the new lift. To get these two pieces apart you need a pickle fork like this. You just pound it in between the two pieces and this is a tapered fit so when you pound it in it just separates the two pieces. After you separate the drag link from the pitman arm just let it rest down here. Then you need to either drop the axle down or raise the truck up and that will separate the spring pack from the spring perch on the axle. Um, just make sure that you've got enough slack in your brake lines and also the axle breather. Um, that's pretty short so just make sure it doesn't rip or put too much pressure on it. And from that point we'll disconnect the springs and get the new ones in there. Here you can see the stock pitman arm and the drop pitman arm from Skyjacker. Again, that's so the steering stays correct after the lift. Um, you can see the teeth in here. It's keyed, so it just goes on in one direction, so you don't have to do any aligning or anything like that. Here's an old spring and a new spring to compare to each other. Um, the top one is obviously old, and it's perfectly straight without any weight of the vehicle on it. When it was in the truck, it had a negative arch to it. And I'm not sure if that's normal, but it doesn't seem like it should be. So anyway, the bottom spring, you can see where the lift is going to come from. It's got more arch to it. Here I've installed the greasable ORD bushings. Uh, they're really similar to the ones that come with the Tough Country Springs. Here are the bushings and then the center sleeve. Um, in some cases, they're actually the same bushings, but the uh, sleeve is drilled in the in the ORD version so it, so it'll let the grease get in there. In some cases the ORD bushings have a thinner steel sleeve so that they can have a larger diameter bolt for more strength. To get these out I used a socket and that helps you pound out the center sleeve and after that you can use a channel lock and kind of grip the outside of the bushings and wiggle them out. To install the new bushings I would recommend greasing up the inside of the leaf eye 
and that will help the bushings slide in more easily and then grease the sleeve and that helps it go in easily too. This is the rear mount for the front spring. You can see mine's in pretty poor condition. Um, you need to get these out to replace them with the new bushings from ORD. So just knock out the center sleeve and then pull the bushing halves out from either side. Here's one of the new bushings from ORD. Again, same thing, just grease the inside and stick each half of the bushing in and then grease the outside of the sleeve and then stick the sleeve in. So here are the new springs in place. I would recommend putting the new U-bolts on and the top plate on and leaving it loose. That lets you wiggle it around to get everything lined up. Um, you adjust the height of the axle or the truck so that you can slip the bolts through and um, eventually you get everything lined up and then you can cinch it down. Um, after you get those suspension bolts tight, then tighten down your U-bolts after everything is set. Here you can see I've got the Tough Country SX8000 shocks installed. Um, they mount in the factory shock locations without any modifications. It's important to install new shocks when you put a lift like this on. Your old shocks won't have enough travel and so they'll be damaged. So just make sure your shocks match up with your lift size. Here's the drop pitman arm on the truck. Um, just engage the splines and then tap it up with a hammer so that it slides onto the shaft. Um, there's a cutout on the back of the shaft to allow this bolt to slip in. And then put the, put the nut on on the back side and torque it down. And then just get the drag link and position it in the new pitman arm. And then put the castle nut on and torque that down. And don't forget the cotter pin in there. You can see I've got the sway bar up right now and disconnected. I think I'm going to try it that way for a while and see, see how it handles. Um, some guys say you don't need it, other guys use it. So I'm just going to try it without it connected and see how it handles. I can always hook it up later. So here's the truck out in the daylight. Looks pretty good. I'm fairly happy with it. Um, the front ended up being a little bit lower than the rear. I'll measure that for you in just a second here. But overall I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, I may bring the rear down a little, I'm not sure yet. It's got a little bit of a rake, I'd rather have it level. Um, these tires are 285-70-17s, so they, that converts to about 33 inches, just in case you're wondering. But anyway, I think it looks pretty good. Here we are on the passenger front. I'm going to measure it for you real quick. That's 26 and 7 eighths, so from the measurement that we took before the lift, that's about four and three quarter inches of lift that we got out of these four inch springs. So the old springs may have been sagged a little bit. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing and let me know if you have any questions.